Hello, welcome to this episode of How to Learn a Language, the podcast all about how to learn a language, very much in the name. My name is Lindsay, I am your host, and this episode is an interview. It's actually the first interview that I've recorded intentionally for the podcast. So we had um, our first ever interview episode way back, like right at the beginning, um, but that was recorded with YouTube in mind. And this I recorded knowing that the podcast exists today, in fact, the day that I'm filming this little intro. So yeah, it's quite exciting. And it's with someone that if you know my work and you've kind of been following for a little while, then you'll probably know this person as well. So I speak to Kirsten Cable. We have hosted, as you'll hear us talk about many a podcast together of her show, The Fluent Show. And we've done lots of different projects together, including women in language, all sorts of things. So I wanted to talk to Kirsten specifically. Obviously, we've talked a lot about language in the past, but I really wanted to talk about her experience learning English primarily. And we talk about a lot more um, in the conversation. It's really, really, really nice, thorough, thorough conversation we have. But I really wanted to start there because I think it's an interesting topic. Like, is it different when you learn English? versus learning other languages and so I wanted to get Kirsten's perspective on that so have a listen I hope you enjoy this episode and I'll speak to you very very soon enjoy okay you ready yeah excellent all right so Kirsten hi I'm on Lindsay's podcast <laughs> <laughs> great to see you we've never spoken before so no, I have dreamed of this day <laughs> so cool <laughs> yeah it, it it feels I feel a little bit nervous because I know you just recently like made a course right about how to do interviews oh yeah so like you know no pressure <laughs> on me here to interview you um but also if if maybe if people are listening to this or watching this and they yeah. don't know who you are they've never heard of the fluent show never like heard of the fluent oh, show. Oh, um would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so weird. Okay, so the reason it's weird, just in case you don't know, is because Lindsay and I have, we started our online language learning businessy things roughly around the same time as each other, um, which is sort of about 10 years ago, um, and sort of started seeing each other around on Twitter or whatever. I don't know, myspace.com. <laughs> Um, and I definitely was, not my space. I was starting to experiment with my with my podcast at the time, the Creative Language Learning Podcast. I had Lindsay as a guest, um, and Lindsay then became because it, because we had so much fun. I was like, "Do you want to become my co-host?" And she just says yes to whatever you ask her, really. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> not everything. Come on, no, but like every project that like Lin, you're you're always such a good project partner. So Lindsay was like, "Yeah, I'm up for it. All right, I'm game." Um, so Lindsay became my co-host and we have already done about a hundred whatever podcast episodes together on a show that I used to host, which I highly recommend to you. If you're done with this one, please head over to <laughs> fluent.show. Not done, like never listening. <laughs> I was going to say. Want more? <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, my name is Kirsten Cable. I run a website. It's called fluentlanguage.co.uk and hosted... Uh, for a long, long time, a podcast called The Fluent Show, which is co-hosted by Lindsay, where we do words of the year and top tools and a, a lot of really meaningful discussions and also debates on whether Sean Paul is better than Shakira um, or actually just a Sean Paul Shakira Appreciation Society, really. Wow, we are minutes in before we started recording. Kirsten said, oh, how can I get Sean Paul into the conversation? That didn't <laughs> take long. I have to say, I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, well, that to-do list item is now done and I do not need to mention Sean Paul. There we go. Oh. Now we can enjoy the conversation. <laughs> um, my own language background and all that stuff is I am from Germany. So uh, my number Dutch Sprache is Dutch. I, I speak native German. I didn't learn really formally languages until I was 10. Um, and then I had a fairly good secondary school. So I did quite a few languages in that. I moved to England 20 years ago. I've now spent half my life pretty much in the UK. Uh, so I'm also kind of British and I still really love languages and yeah, make courses, talk to people, uh, do some coaching for language learners and you can find out the rest on my website. 
that's a long intro speech already. It's all good. Thank okay. you for that. I, I always feel that people do it themselves better than I ever could. So grateful. Thank you. I'm um, here to counterproof that. <laughs> <laughs> and like we've we've obviously spoken, as you've just said, we co-hosted podcasts for a lot of episodes. So we've obviously spoken a lot about language and about our own languages. But mm. what I wanted to really focus on today is how you learn English and maybe how that's been different learning other languages because I feel that there is and I I say this as a native English speaker so you can obviously correct me if I'm wrong but I do feel that there is this assumption perhaps by native English speakers that English is easier to learn because it's more prolific because it's kind mm. of everywhere the TV mm. gets exported the music is all over the place like mm. and I just wonder if that was the case or how it differed from learning other languages both in school and and then kind of later in life as well so yeah English is kind of the focus and I think as well like there's going to be people that listen to this podcast who like you speak fluent English but it's not their native language mm -hmm. so maybe there's a sense there where people can relate to your experience on that and that's going to be really interesting to, to hear feedback on and also people like me who have never had to learn English in the same way that we mm. learn other languages out of choice. So yeah, that's why I wanted to talk about it. So I'm curious. And yeah. you said you never started learning any language other than German until you were 10, right? But that wasn't English. No, I started learning English when I was 10. Like English that's when 10. I went to the secondary school, the gymnasium. Okay. For me, that was age 10. And uh, then that's when I started having English lessons. And before that, I remember we did like, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. They don't really, they kind of tell you sort of what the words mean, but that was like a thing that we did in my, you know, like primary school when I was like eight, maybe. So if you're but happy it's kind and of you know out it. Of context. It's not lessons. Yeah. It's just today we're singing this thing. It happens to be in English. We also sang songs in French, songs in Hebrew. It wasn't really exceptional the, the song in French was it Frère Jacques no it was uh, Sur le Pont d'Avignon oh yeah that's the other classic we did Frère Jacques yeah. but that has a German translation so we just sang that in German ah okay I was yeah. gonna say maybe I if you're happy and you know it is the Frère Jacques equivalent but also yeah Sur le Pont d'Avignon doobie 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 yeah yep yeah oh I remember and then I don't know why Hebrew but we had like a Hebrew How song curious yeah. yeah this is fascinating for me because obviously when I make uh, content when I talk about language learning I talk from the perspective I talk to English native speakers because mm. I live in England because and when I started my business I was talking to English native speakers and so I know because I had already seen all the blocks that in Germany I hadn't encountered in that way um, so the the English native speakers the at least the Brits that I've spoken to and the Americans actually um, they do have a talent for telling themselves extra that it's hard which doesn't mm -hmm, help anybody mm -hmm. um, so that was sort of where my fire came from to start my to, to, to start my blog to start talking to people like I have opinions um, which means I always talk to people pretty much as a peer like ah oh, yeah you speak English I speak English and people I think often forget that I learned English as a second language including me yeah. so it's it's strange so I have to put myself into a different mindset today which I'm very happy to do yeah so how so you started when you're 10 but mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize it was that early because for me I thought from when we spoke before that it was pulp that it was like pulp was your Shakira equivalent for me <laughs> pulp was a hundred percent it pulp was huge and how old were you but before that okay uh, okay, so there is a truth to, I do not subscribe to English is easier to learn, mm. but there is a truth to what you mentioned before, and that is that English has, what are they calling it? They call it cultural... Currency? Currency is what I'm kind yeah. of thinking. There is a sort of, you know, in diplomacy, you say like you've got... Soft, soft, soft power. Soft power, that's it. Yeah. Yes, English has... And that's really like due to a lot of it's due to the Americans, not the Brits, but then the Brits and the Americans kind of similar. Um, yeah. So like culturally, 
there's like a soft power mm. and it is true and it is assumed that learning English is really, really important. But nobody learns a language because they're told it's important to learn it, right? We don't. Do you think? I think some people do. Yeah, they try, but it's not, you don't really get to the full, at some point. To the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, people start a language because they mm. think it's important, but then that's that's not the same as when I say learn. I really, I really meant like assimilate somehow to it. Okay, um, go full depth. Yeah, not that you're not a valid learner if that's what if not if you haven't done that. I've never assimilated that much with French. I speak French fluently; it's fine. But you know, so English. I'm trying to think. I've talked to Christian about this um, and about like Christian, sorry, being my husband, um, who's British. And I think there is something maybe even stronger in growing up German to the cultural dominance in the, in the 80s when I grew up um, of America in particular. More like, so we got than a lot the of UK. Ad, yeah, yeah, because yeah, they won the war definitely. and the Marshall Plan thing. And so Americans kind of had a really strong hand in building modern Germany mm. and influence there. So we had a lot of, you know, like we have Amer American military bases on, on mm. German land. And it, it, there was just a lot, you know, American occupied and people knew uh, some Americans. We knew people who've gone there and stuff. So I th think without it becoming this like denial of a German identity, I think it was sort of America was cool always when I was growing up same and did Christian say the same thing Christian no. being a native Brit no because I feel that America was cool when I was growing up that was the understanding there yeah. was this there was this 90s kind of in the pulp era of like sort of Brit pop and then followed by like Spice Girls there was this era of like cool Britannia but generally even now I'd say like America was the the cool not cool. like a regular English. I'm a cool English. So the cool cousin. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a surfboard. <laughs> California. So oh, you God. weren't drawn to that in the same way as... No, I. you know how I like to go against stuff, seemingly. Right. Right? And we had, they had, they used to do... Before we had the internet, children, gather around the <laughs> fire. God. <laughs> um, when I was a kid on tv especially when we only had three channels which until i was like six we only had three channels and then we got satellites satellites wow the world and um the third channel in england you do this as well they used to have a lot of tv programming that's like from the open university or from the yeah you know and they used to do the english learning programming right so we had this guy um and they're doing like little scenes and it was kind of the English learning programming. And I remember kind of sitting in front of it to really understand what was happening. But it's essentially like a little language lesson. And I'm sat there being like fascinated by it. Right. So that all to say, there's so many little bits. By the time I was learning, I started my first foreign language formal lesson. I was so ready. Mm -hmm. I was so ready. I was excited. I was looking forward to it. Like that was the thing that I... I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. Give me the book. I want to hear all about Kevin and Kate who live in Whitby. Let's go. But then like the, the, um, didn't realize this was going to be a conversation like about American influence, British influence, but like the people yeah. in the English book. Yeah. That English book is set in the UK. And I was going to say learned, Whitby. That's a choice. They yeah. weren't in London. No, I'm they surprised. were not in London. They were not, they were in Whitby. Wow. They had an aunt in Swansea. Wales is not England. Wow. Oh, uh -huh. what, a, what a good lesson to, to start off with. There's more than just London. <laughs> they have a friend in York. It was, it was all very Northern. They never spoke in Northern accents, of course. Everybody spoke. <laughs> <laughs> a nice clipped RP. That's it, right? So there was also the prestige, I think, in mm. how English was seen in my school of British English. British, like American was kind of just like, yeah, you know, dirty, like. Right, I was going to say. You know, yeah. and British English was like the prestigious, this is the educated one, this is the Cup one. Cup of really tea like. and a suit and an umbrella. It, it, Those it's kind of subtle because you're like mm. 10, of course, but it was certainly there. And I would say my teachers, I adored all my English teachers. I had. Were they English? 
No, no, all Germans. Okay. All super Anglophile Germans. Oh. Super Anglophile Germans. Like they were all all the English teachers I would say we had at my school who were that that I ever had or that I remember now, super, super Anglophile. Do you think you're an Anglophile? Oh, I was, yeah, massively. Was? What happened? No, I, I live here now. <laughs> <laughs> it's you can't be an Anglophile because that's there's something about idealizing it, right? You can't be an Anglophile and live in modern Britain for 20 years and be I think you British. can. Like, I don't mean to bring down the tone, but a paedophile touches the kid. Like, <laughs> there's still a paedophile. Welcome to Lindsay's podcast. I don't know what that was. <laughs> we can cut that out. But <laughs> but like an Anglophile, I think you can still be living in the country. But I, I don't know if... I don't know if I could be an Anglophile. I don't know, but say, okay, so you're like a, let's say you're a S Spainophile. Uh, uh, Hispanophile. I know it's Luso for Portuguese. Lusophile, Francophile, uh, yeah. Hispanophile maybe? Yeah. But it's sort of, I was just, I, I used to have these, did I tell you about these little calendars I used to have? Postcard calendars? They're no. quite quite you still get them in Germany, like little desk calendars. Okay. And, postcard. Yeah. and they're called they used to be called Sehnsuchtskalender, so the, the calendars of longing. And the idea was like lots and lots of locations that there were just these 52 absolutely beautiful photos from a specific location. You can buy them from anywhere. And I always had like the England one or the Großbritannien mm. one. Always, always had them. I have been to a few of the locations that I remember from the postcards, and it was just Oh, that's Amazing. cool yeah, yeah yeah it was really cool so so there's a real combination then of these little and it's the same for me when I think back mm -hmm. to my own sort of early influences of like well, what got me started with this there's just this these sprinklings of different yeah. things that all kind of combine I you think. know what you know the the powerful thing about that when you realize it's like yeah. none of it's the lessons no none of it's the school lessons but it's it's what that kicks off and I think that's when people say like English is easier to learn I don't think that that is true as a language it is not it's got mm. so many exceptions it is not easy to pronounce you you will hear when a German speaks English to you often German grammar coming through you know so yeah. same as when an English person when speaks I do German to me I can yeah. hear Germ English grammar coming through so it's not easy that's not true we don't all just magically soak it in don't know about the people who've got tv in in english because we we're not like that a lot of stuff is the dubbing is really strong in germany but that cultural dominance thing it makes all the little hooks much more available so then it gets easier to kind of attach yourself to something and to find something that is so you and i think for me being just a slightly like i was always been like a slightly quirky child i've always been like a little bit different I know everybody says that but like I have always been like a little bit different and felt a little bit different and I, as teenagers do you kind of look to see that somewhere and for me the kind of British uh, eccentricness so like late night maybe uh, Monty Python might be on TV and you'd be like oh what is this you know it's mm -hmm. like they're being so funny it's so strange and then finding coming to pulp finding um, the music of pulp which, if you don't know, is like a Britpop band from the 90s and had a hit album. She came called... from Greece, she had a thirst for knowledge. Q copyright strike. <laughs> and, but they sang from this outsider perspective. And the just there was just something in how does how these people held themselves and the band and everything that just really massively spoke to me yeah mass just like and the thing is I've just been to see Pulp for the first time ever in the UK 20 years later the, the girl next to me was 20 years old like it, and I was like I knew this bad before you were born this is unbelievable but like I was obsessed with this before you were but also she knew all the words so this is universal appeal if you haven't heard this you might like it even if you're 20 but the I had not um I don't think ever really mm, seen and understood the appeal of the song Common People, which is so strongly about class consciousness, as a song about class consciousness. 
for me, the first time I heard that, or like when I heard that song, it's got a line in it that it goes, everybody hates a tourist. I'm from a tourist area. They're all over in the summer. I was like, oh, I heard the tourists. I didn't understand about like the class tourist or that idea that is so British. And when I saw it at, at the festival and I saw the Brits singing it, I was like, oh, I get it. I, I get your, your um, layer you know, yeah. like your, your extra layer. But I didn't have that accessible to me. And I, I've always loved that about learning a language and then going deeper, 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 the layers bit. So it still offers something new to me now. That is so true. And I'm thinking in particular of, for me, like Bad Bunny, I know. And, and like you say, it's not exactly an unpopular opinion. Like there's universal appeal. Bad Bunny, like the most played Spotify artist for three yeah. years in a row, right? But like the song El Apagón, The Blackout, I listen to that and I think, woo, woo. Me gusta la carta de Puerto Rico. I'm like, like, yeah, this is good, right? But then when you translate the lyrics, when you listen to people talk about it a bit more and you understand that actually, you know, this was released with... Um, a 20 uh, the music video was released inside a 20 minute documentary about very serious you know things happening in, in yeah. Puerto Rico yeah. in terms of like the power the people taking over the power and all of this yeah like you then understand this extra layer of why people love that so much and, and like you went to a gig in Puerto Rico then there I would, would be a really passion. feel it exactly exactly it, yeah that's that's how I felt I was like yeah. oh I get the like I got ang like there, there was anger, there was anger passion in, mm. in the audience. There's something they're saying something that and, and the, the fact, I mean, just just put to the side the fact that this still applies. Yeah. You know, like this still works. The reason yeah. the song's popular now is not because it's about the 90s. It's about it's about universal things, right? So like music has to say something to us, I think, about our life and I mean, as I often say, this even if about it's my marketing, line. when I'm teaching the marketing, when I do the podcast, I always think like, what does this say to you about your life? Because that's really what it's about. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not that nuanced, full layered understanding, it's just that one line. Everybody's a tourist that hooks you in. Mm. That gets you wanting to learn more English. Yeah. And so presumably then so pulp kind of then you want to know what the next line is. Right. Then you want to know yeah. what's well, where next? does this fit in? Yeah. 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 And pulp in particular, I don't know if you know this, but like if you mm. have you ever bought a record or do you own anything that's like like a vinyl a physical pulp record? Um, or a CD. Pulp, CDs pulp, are pulp, pulp specifically, no, but yeah, no, I had okay. I had CDs for a so while. They always had a thing um where it said when you when you you know, like because I used to this is again before the internet, before I could just go on genius or whatever, <laughs> like you, you wouldn't know the words, you wouldn't know the words of mm. what somebody is singing. So you're sat there, and I remember um, just being sat there and like slowly listening, like listening, listening to like five seconds of this thing. Couldn't slow it down, couldn't speed it up. Was just in my CD player. Listen to ten seconds, and be like, "What's he saying?" Okay, try and write this down. Try and work out what it says. Um, and like our most popular teeny magazine, Bravo, would print two lyrics and translate them. Mm -hmm rather flower florally rather ridiculously but like that's that's what they did so you'd get all these boy band lyrics from like NSYNC where it was like girl my heart is speaking to you and then translate it into your language as if it's this like super profound thing you know where it's like we're gonna go I don't know we're gonna live it up at a party and you'd be like oh yeah okay and it's just I think there's a real when you have that much cultural dominance and all of your, mm. ra not all of your radio music, but a very large part of your radio music and your music television. Again, I'm an old woman, let's just face it. Like, mm. and everything around you is in this language. There is this kind of, there is definitely that drive to go, well, what are they saying? What does this mean? So like the radio used to do, they had like little lyric sessions where they'd translate the words really? and tell you what this means. Yeah. That's because fascinating. it's not assumed everybody can speak English, is it? Can I ask you a question about that? Did you ever feel resentment to English because of that sort of no, cultural no. dominance? No. No, just massive like desire. Like German music mm. is available. German music is not, it wasn't hard. I have, you know, uh, the indie band Tocotronic that I'm so into. Like they always sing in German. Wow. Right. Never mind. They're a good band. But like they always, always sing in German. There was nothing wrong with it for me personally yeah. no 
I know what you mean. Like you'd get that from your parents, but they're like, oh, everything's in English these days. Man. That's what I was thinking. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a radio channel for that. It's like the Schlager channel. You can go and listen to that. That's fine. <laughs> no, that it doesn't. It hasn't harmed the German music industry as such. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's enough of us. It's fine. I think I'm thinking you're saying about radio. And I think it still exists in France, right? The rule of every third song needs to be in French. Yes, that is a that's a French thing. Like that's, as far yeah. as I'm aware, Germany has no such law. Hmm. Germany has always been a bit. I think because we're less of a centralized country, right? So we've mm-hmm. got the dialect diversity, and Hochdeutsch is kind of made up anyway. Yeah, there's that sort of awareness. So I don't think we are as protective in that way, and you get a lot of Anglicisms. We call Anglicismen in the German language. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for how people, you know, how how exactly it is now, how people feel now. Like, but like people, we had this, I think, for word of the year, maybe. Like, mm. you know how many times we've done words of the year and right. German words, like half the list is English words. Yeah, or we do the, the German word of the year and you're, as someone, like you say, who's lived in the UK for 20 years, looking at that going, why is this the word of the year? What does this yeah, mean? I need to what's, read the the, what's the layers, you know? Yeah. Having yeah. to look back in that way. Yeah, language is is never separate from its cultural context. No. And that's the thing of like English. I think English has this cultural dominance because of mm. just, I don't know, the way the world's gone in the 20th century. Mm. There was a real cultural dominance mm. in there. Do you want me to show you my picture? Go on. Okay, so I used to, I still got my old like, there you go. This is oh, is that your like school sticker? Yes. You, you I used to have those. Lindsay Dow, 7KA. <laughs> this is um it's just got my name, like my old, my unmarried name, Hammers, um, and my address and our phone number. Yeah. Which is fine. You can buy good wine there. So if you ever want to, nobody cares. <laughs> this is my mum's dictionary. This is from okay. the 70s, and I used to have this next to my bed every night. So it's like proper came out in 1970, copyright 1953. Wow. Um, this is the, the, the she gave me her dictionary because we're frugal people um, so it probably won't have I don't know what's a modern word <laughs> that I could look at like Mobile browser phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna have that in it is it <laughs> um, and just some to fag exhaust yourself Mm-mm. no I know <laughs> I mean cigarettes right in the 90s <laughs> Uh, yeah it's it's very it's very very it's I used to sleep with this next to my bed yeah not for some kind of like romanticizing or anything it's because yeah. whenever I was able to get hold of like maybe an English teeny magazine like just 17 or something like that um, or when friends went to England I was the one who was like get me a copy of enemy I really want a copy of enemy mm. this uh, used to be a big thing in the UK new musical express um, or maybe I'd buy them and stuff and I would like that was all I had so I would like milk it properly and often I'd want to know what the words are and what I was saying earlier about the pulp the physical records so all the lyrics used to have you you take out the, the little booklet of the CD and it has all the lyrics printed yeah. and there's always had this little note on it that says NB which already you're like, don't know what that means, need to work out what that means. Um, please do not read the lyrics while listening to the recordings. And because it said that, it's it's like, I don't know, it's a it's a quirk, it's an affectation. Uh, I don't know what it... I have read They're it. Not like other bands. They're not like other bands. <laughs> special. Um, I mean, also, I was like the only girl in the... I was the only pulp fan in the village. Yeah. And the other 25 villages, right? So it really yeah. was, I'm special because of this sort of a thing. Um, that meant I would really study the lyrics because I did want to know what they're saying but I took that so seriously like I don't know maybe that's a German mentality thing that somebody gave me a rule (laughs) I did not break that rule Mm. I did not break that rule they completely made it up but like if you know um, I took that so seriously and that meant I was like studying those lyrics and really going okay and now I have to try and remember this and I'm going to look it up so it wasn't as much about I'm learning vocabulary. Like, yeah, I mean, there were vocab lists in school and I did really well. And I always got A's in English, never got A's in much mm. else. But English mm. was like my, then I just started taking pride in it. And then it was important to me to get the A. But really, it wasn't hard. 
it wasn't mm. hard because the real learning was somewhere else with the pulp lyrics with the pulp Primarily. lyrics with the blur lyrics with the whatever yeah. i'd i mean i had a cooler shaker cd it's it's all <laughs> it's all there <laughs> but like yeah 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 it was it was in a different part of my life i think where the real link, the learning happened yeah. i remember i bought the videotape for the full monty um for 50 marks which is very expensive for a videotape um and in in a place where i was went to a shopping center day you know because i also really small village here so it's like a four hour trip to go shopping um and i took it home and i watched so much of it and it was so hard to understand what they're how saying how old were you when you watched the full monty like 16 or something oh okay i, I was gonna say like a film about people literally stripping like okay <laughs> yeah but it's our cultural dominance is is doing its work <laughs> never thought about that as a big taboo it was 16 that's fine <laughs> no but like one of the first things he says in the film is he greets somebody with a up which obviously oh, you've okay. no idea so it's this all is in where, Sheffield dialect this is where your kind of can I say obsession with northern England comes in well interest? Pulp, Pulp were from Sheffield right so I was always kind oh, okay of, that was sort of a I'm interested in this yeah um I don't know if I, I didn't have I don't have an obsession with northern England I just moved there right <laughs> so that wasn't before that kind no, of no 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 I remember my our first trip to England. We went to London. We stayed with some lady in Wimbledon, mm -hmm. um, and um, my parent. Yeah, my parents eventually basically just gave in. I really wanted to do a Sprachurlaub, you know, which is you see a lot. It, now I live in Canterbury. I see so many of the little like it's when your kid is like fourteen, fifteen, yeah, and you're sending them to like language camp oh okay right so e, you know the company ef okay yeah 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 they 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 do that was their main trade that is their big mm. trade um you have it you can send your kid to spain for two weeks to, like france and england and then some of my friends were going to england i was campaigning for it at home but it, the, the budget wasn't there did you um, ever do exchanges yes like with school okay yeah two two and, did, and do you think that helped did it help me learn english yeah I was already so obsessed at the time. Um, it helped. It was more of a kind of. Uh, it helped you. Experience a world where people actually spoke this, which is mind blowing. You know, when you go, say, when you're learning a language, it's so abstract. And then you go somewhere and you're like, oh, my God, yeah. this is real. Yeah, and that's still you, you can do it on Duolingo now. And it, it would you'd still have that experience. Yeah, especially uh, like you say, living in a small village. You know, I imagine not much speaking practice. Although, can we talk about one of my favorite, one of the things we have talked about <laughs> in, in English? Oh, you know what I'm going to say. So <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Like, <laughs> that, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm very tempted when people are like, how should I learn a language? I should respond with this. Uh, Do you want to share? What, my eavesdropping on the tourists? No. Oh, that's. Yeah, that's not embarrassing that's oh, just, okay that's just like what you do I do that all the time okay <laughs> no no I'm talking about but like, how many streets do you follow them around oh I don't follow people. yeah see yeah. oh okay I don't Stalker. do that anymore Ooh. it's it's legal it's fine uh but oh. no that's not what I was gonna say oh, okay. I was gonna say about phone boxes phone boxes yeah oh with the ringtones ringtones but do you'd ring you'd ring people up yeah ah! <laughs> okay so oh ah, I did that from home as well but it's like very expensive so you're better mm -hmm. off doing it on your own money um but yeah we had a phone box in my village and I would if I say had an English language magazine or something had a phone number in it um or you just I don't know like adverts in newspaper in um newspapers sometimes would have phone numbers on and then sometimes i would just like ring the number like you know like the 0044 for for the uk um and then already when you know when it's ringing and it goes dude dude that's not what a german ringtone sounds like when you're ringing it goes dude oh so that's already exciting that's mind blowing yeah yeah that already like you could just hang up right there that's already like you're broken you're gone yeah you're gone um and then somebody might answer and i answer in english and you go oh <gasps> Like put a phone down. 
I love that so what much. What on earth are you going to say? <laughs> did you just ever? Did you ever? <laughs> did you ever say hello? Or did was it always? <gasps> I think maybe if I had like a really courageous moment, I might have gone like, ah. oh, and then it's, so, have... it's just so cute. I can just really picture like, you know, <laughs> and I just imagine like someone walking their dog, going past the phone box and like, oh, she's there again. Like this idea of like <laughs> everyone knew, <laughs> but you didn't know that anyone knew, you know? Oh, oh I don't think I rang phone boxes because I wouldn't have had the number. No, no, you in the phone box, right? Oh, in the box. <laughs> yeah, Everybody. yeah. And That's people in the village see you and they're like, there she is again, calling Imagine, England. Imagine, like, or like, you know, like in England, you've got this like one village, I just thought this like little whittling or something and everybody's like on their morning walk and a phone box is ringing. Like, ah, that's the German kid again. There she is. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know. I think there is something I've said before about like growing up in such a small place mm -hmm. where like that's you really look for your lines to the outside world yeah again maybe less now with you know the line to the outside world is is just it's so that's, easy that's one thing I wanted to ask about like so much of your story with English is shaped by the era that it was in I think we can call the 90s an era now can't we yeah yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's terrifying it's but century. we will <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally a different century but like it's so shaped by that mm. and I do wonder what you think if you were born you know 10 years ago and now you're 10 and you're starting learning English now yeah. how that would be different if you would find the same drive and spark when it is so much easier to access and so much more prolific like was part of the thrill of it the it, exclusivity not, of it the language itself wasn't hard to access right yeah. you just put radio on the language right. itself was really easy to access that wasn't the thing yeah it wasn't it was that I found it was so available that on the German radio they played the Pope song yeah I loved the Pope song I would and then it was like imagine I did I didn't then just like look it up and then I and then you have to wait it's actually in a way it makes it harder because I can't then like go down a rabbit hole I am waiting until the next time we go to Trier which is mm -hmm. an hour's drive and I have to you really might have to wait a week or two and then hope that my parents take me and then at some point go to the record shop and like look in the bit on the P and see if it's there and if it's not there you're back at square one and you kind of might have yeah. to try again so I think maybe it's I don't think it's harder to get obsessed and deeply into something. I can imagine it maybe these days you'd move on a little bit quicker. Right? That's what yeah, that's what I think too. But you can just you can just then dive from one into the next and go deeper mm. into a particular area. So no, I don't think I don't think it's it's impossible or anything like that now. And again, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the language itself. It's that I found things that I wanted in my life in a very teenager, melodramatic way. Um, and that was my window. Yeah. So that's more that. And, and in the same way, like, you know, like when people learn French now, often yeah. you, you learn French as an English native speaker, often be, because you have this dream of like maybe the, the romantic city of Paris or don't really understand that. Have you been to Paris? I mean, but never mind. But like, you know, you have this dream. You have a, maybe you dream of, oh, if I move there and like in Provence among the I'd have a fresh city. baguette every morning. Yeah, 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 I'd cycle with a little yeah. dog and a little baguette and I'd have a beret on and there's me like with my idyllic. It's Belle from, from the Disney thing. Uh, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast there we go you know like you have I think at least for me maybe there's still a little bit of the dream when I learn a language like with learning Welsh there is still some sort of a dream attached to it and that's some languages make that easier than others because I think they just speak to you at that different part moment in your life I'm glad you brought up Welsh because I wanted to ask you as well how English has differed from when you've then learned other languages because you learn other languages in school alongside English right Latin mm -hmm. and French 
had to do French, yeah. so English compulsory. And then in my school, um, two years later, so age 13, 12, 13, yeah. um, the choice was French or Latin. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose French, went with that. Um, and then they had like a sort of afternoon club thing, Italian, did that. Ooh. And then after, when, when the, my sixth form equivalent started, the Italian thing fell away. Yeah. Obviously, was still doing French and English. And um, so I already had this identity as like, languages are my thing. I like languages. Yeah. Um, so as a side note, my one of my best friends, who knew me really well at the time, we were best friends, has once remarked that maybe because of how I think and how, how I, you know, what, what works for me, learning wise, the languages felt more accessible to me because they're less regimented. And you can do a thing where you're like, I'm just reading pop music lyrics and then, uh, and then you bring in that back in. So I wasn't that good at homework. I'm not that good with detail or like specific pr prescribed things. Somebody tells me like, do this thing. It's really systematic. Yeah. Get all your prepositions. Perfect. Yeah. I get very, very bored very quickly. Yeah. The way I teach even German is I try to de-emphasize the get everything perfectly right I look at the big picture I try to get you to see the big picture first and then say okay like now you can fine-tune bits if you want but for me it's often enough to get the big picture yeah. right so maybe languages lend itself to how my brain wants to process stuff I don't know um but it made you know she said it in in a specific context so that was interesting mm. uh when Italian fell away I started doing five lesson a week Latin and that was because I thought if I want to go to university and do languages at university or become a teacher ever German university don't know if they still do at the time they required a thing called Latinum oh. so you had you had to show Latin wow yeah if you want oh, to be wow. a religious education teacher you also need the Grecum oh okay mm -hmm. see yeah like here especially in that sort of same era, like Latin was very much grammar school material, mm -hmm. which now there's a handful of kind of home counties yeah. that maybe still have. In, in England, right. Like this yeah. is a farmer's kid learning Latin. It wasn't to me a big deal. It was just normal. Yeah. It's like really Latin, fun, actually. you just didn't get the opportunity unless mm -hmm. you were like a private school grammar school kid, really. Being from a region where like, um, Germany's oldest city is really near and like a lot of stuff is Roman um mm. it, it was actually really cool because there's a lot of like random old stuff read with the, the Roman inscriptions yeah. and you can imagine them walking around and you know it was it actually felt quite relevant it was it was fun yeah yeah um so so I did all of those um and that was my schooling yeah so there's an element of choice in that but it's all the the, the primary lessons even if it's not where all the learning happened for you the primary lessons was formal should we say it was it was formal. school oh yeah there was a, there was a lot of like formal substance there like and if so, clauses and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah yeah so when did you first go on to self-study to choose a language for yourself by yourself completely Apart from like the odd sort of one week double here and there, mm. probably Russian. Mm. So not actually, because then I, I moved to England and I did um, university and again, like French and English formally. Um, I then did, well, I don't know, what is self-study, right? So that was still <laughs> like for a qualification. Um, mm. And then I started and then did my translation masters which wasn't adding new languages it was a, about a, a skill to do with language right mm. that's what I thought I was going to be like a translator very quickly realized I'm not going to be a translator Jesus Christ bad idea oh so you have to be a teacher because that's the only other alternative mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you translate well, or you teach <laughs> I freelance translated and I was looking around going like what on earth like what I'm gonna do um I knew at the time that I could work in like export sales so I was mm. looking at that kind of thing and that's when I found international student recruitment and I went I happened to get a job at the university where I studied and because is of this that, why you started learning Russian because of the Kazakhstan stuff yeah but I came later but oh. yeah 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 because well I was kind of interested and stuff but first 
they did something at that university where the main French third year module, so like a French like C1, C2 module, they had open to the public if you wanted to take a high level French class, you could just walk it like walk wow. in. Nice. I mean, how many third year French students are there? Like 12. So mm. you just walk in and you become a part of like that class. So I took the module I'd already done in my degree, yeah. retook it four years later and did it again. I did much, much better. You'd be, merci Sylvie. Like I did much, much better. I was really pleased. Um, but that was the first time I think I actively went, okay, choice of learning a language. So when you say solo learning or self-study, it was in a formal environment for me mm. I've learned it's really good to follow some sort of a formal thing that somebody else just does all the thinking and yeah. organizing and I could just show up it helps me yeah I can self-study without that I yeah. can and I do but that it's just nice mm. um so and I like group classes so I just went yeah. and did it did that, that and then started traveling more maybe two three years yeah later went to Kazakhstan and I was just generally traveling around the world but Kazakhstan was a very like really low English country and the street signs all in Kazakh and Russian and I was like I don't even know the difference I can't even tell which is which yeah I can't read any of the street names and I'm starting there like with the city map puzzling out where is like Fedora Street or, or whatever mm. like Ulitsa whatever and then you're learning okay Ulitsa is this this is what that little bit on the sign because I like walking around and I to get around to like my meetings yeah. I don't really like taxiing it everywhere never have yeah, yeah. um so I'd, I'd always be the person who's like brooksack i'm just not a formal person in that way um and that's kind of where almost by necessity because they just gave me a map that was you know like, yeah. the street sign doesn't have english on what are you going to do right so and i started learning that's when i started learning russian i think probably russian was my first i would say new not french self-study because mm. Spanish that was all classroom as well and that was just like disqualification happens to have Spanish in so we'll teach you some how did that differ then with Russian from Russian. everything that had come before it I think I've always known that in order for me to do a language I have to find the interest mm. I can't just show up you gotta find and, your pulp yeah I, I gotta <laughs> find it I mean my pulp that's like the deep passion right this is amazing but you know like you gotta find the something right because otherwise yeah. it's here and if it's just here I, I'm sorry it, it goes in and then it's gone right mm. it's like mm. it doesn't really hold on so I think I had to find the interest and for me it, it was nice because it was interest first yeah. Right. Whereas when I started learning Spanish, it was like, yeah, I'm here, you know, nah, nah, nah. with Italian, it was like it was food, to be honest, because we've got a lot of Italian restaurants in Germany. So it was easy to see the language on menus and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think with Russian, it was just the fact that those were actual places I was going and I had an instant utility and in, like deciphering actual signs in the street. And often like um, it's sweet is, is flowers, right? Mm -hmm. you know when you I don't know you've not been to Russia like if you go to Moscow kind of something. tricky to go right now <laughs> yeah I went before I started learning at a great time <laughs> I, I went to Russia at the time where where there was this sort of weird like political like mm. we're cool with Russia um yeah so but in Kazakhstan less but in Moscow and stuff they, they had all these kiosks flower kiosks everywhere so you see mm -hmm. the sweet, the sweet, sweet. um and then because I was with people from there I could go like oh you've got so many flower kiosks and then you get a story from them about International Women's Day and you know yeah. like oh that's the when the men buy the flowers kind of a thing and yeah. you, you get this little like extra right so it was that what I described earlier about English where like you literally have to like go to the phone box and bring somebody up for it to become real this one when you have the interest space or when you're solo studying for me it's kind of it starts with real yeah and then I go oh what is this interesting yeah interesting. so I would say that's if you're asking me the difference that's the only thing that so there's, there's the mind. combination there then with Russian of interest first and also utility for going mm -hmm. to Kazakhstan for these trips mm -hmm. for work is mm -hmm. Welsh next yeah after that yeah okay yeah we were already doing the podcast then like this whole yeah. drama of can I abandon Russian oh my yeah. god and I, I had remember. to really get to like 
okay, this is what I wanted out of Russia. Yeah, yeah. I'm now free. I have to like free myself. Yeah, that feeling of, but I have to take it to see too. Like once you yeah. can abandon that, you can yeah. find. Like, why did I start in the first place if I'm not going to finish? Oh my goodness, um, yeah. Yeah. But you I... never finish a language. No. Well, for <laughs> me, I then went, okay, I was interested in learning Cyrillic. Yeah. I mean, I can say some stuff in Russian. I can still, yeah. you know, greet and do pleasantries and yeah. tell you I don't speak Russian and near uh, Russian, <laughs> but ultimately you don't really speak any Russian yeah but I got what I wanted mm, and then yeah mm. and I was free I, I allowed myself to go with Welsh and Welsh is eight years now right so that's eight years <laughs> yeah is yeah. Welsh is Welsh your second to English in terms of like like passion I was uh, uh, yeah or is it first good question I don't feel like I'm learning English anymore in that way right I when do you think that stopped? Not long after I moved here, I don't think. Mm. May maybe. Because as we said, you never stop, you never finish, but No, but then the also activeness like, every of day it. you got to function in English. Yeah, yeah. Right? So then you're not focusing on the language as much anymore as the the functioning and you got to just like mm. do stuff. So and it was an entirely new challenge coming here because for whatever reason, Lindsay, I moved to the north, <laughs> but I did move to Preston and, you know, people in Preston yeah. have an accent yeah. and I didn't understand a word when I first got there. Yeah. You know? So it, it just became different. And then it wasn't like, and also it then had contact with reality. So the romanticized English image, of yeah. course, doesn't always last. Okay. A little bit. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, look, it's like, exactly how I thought my life would be sometimes you're like oh I, know I thought it would be growing up it's great um but uh yeah it doesn't you know you also get to know all of the rubbish and admin and you have to put the bins out and all the things that you have to put make, the bins I don't know like you know that's life not in the textbook is it that lesson no that's Come yeah on. but life isn't so exciting anymore <laughs> you know like yeah. it's, it's real so it's different so do you think Welsh has replaced that spot that English maybe had before you moved here in terms well, the, of passion and, and the, the difference and the slightly exoticness I, 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 I use the term loosely I think yeah, exotic is a yeah. rubbish word I mean anyway. I'm not learning Welsh in order to um, position myself or something like that I would say um, what do you mean position yourself you know like as in like like not that I was learning English but like I was listening to pop there was an element of identity uh, yeah 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 exactly yeah. like I'm okay. a cool kid kind of a thing yeah. I'm the real cool kid yeah you all look cool and act like yeah. I'm not but I'm really I'm the cooler I'm cooler than you um I don't need that now as much mm. seeing as you know mm. you grow up and you're an adult and then you kind of know you're cool hopefully yeah. fingers crossed for all of you <laughs> um okay what I'm trying to like what I'm thinking about is that that the passion isn't the same and I mm -hmm. think it's because the need isn't the same you know, like that's the identity part. Like, I don't need that as much. Um, when you say the passion isn't the same, do you mean the passion is more or less or different? Less. Mm. Less. But I was very intense. With Welsh? With English. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because like, and I'm, I'm thinking of you with Welsh and I see it as like a love story. The so English must have world. English must have been like proper Hot highs. Age yeah. ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, Welsh is yeah. I mean, I do. I love it. I do. I really, really love it. There is a lot in it for me. Um, it's the sounds, but like something I've said before, it's like the the fact that it it isn't. There is no Welsh and English in the same way because I do live in this country and it's it's actually this country. So we're back to the layers. That's how I felt. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wow, there's a whole hidden bit here. There's a whole hidden level. Yeah. Let's get in there. Like let's dive in. Let's let's learn. And it's it's taught me so much about to be honest, it's taught me all the way like up to colonialism and like I understand the native speaker privilege thing differently. Um it's it's really taught like learning about Welsh taught me a lot about what English is like and what the English are like from a different perspective and a new perspective um 
that sounds really overly critical. It no, is. it doesn't. Well, but also, but quite a unique perspective because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. literally could not be closer geographically. Mm -hmm. So there's no other language that you could learn that will have quite that same teachings, shall we say. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And through the revival and stuff, like Scotland mm. is slightly different um, because the history is different. Yeah. Like there's probably a lot more fight back. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, the, the adversarial and the whole, they had a whole also royal family and stuff. Wales also did, but that all just fell away much sooner. Mm. Um, so, like, I'm, I think back to my life in a UK test book and the way in there it was sort of like, and then we went to Wales to help them out. <laughs> went to Ireland to help them out. Oh, wow. If that's what you say, cool. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing heavily, of course. Um, so with Welsh, it is not the same. I'm just not as obsessed. Hmm. But I do really, really enjoy it. And it's like a delight to learn and just so... Like, it's so much fun for me. Yeah. I never really think about, oh, how am I going to learn? It's like, I never think about like my method or anything. With Chinese, it was much more like, okay, well, what strategy am I going to do? Like, Are Chinese, you still like, learning what's... Chinese? Mm -mm. Hmm. No. Nah. And how I did you did get to that Up to point? HSK one, maybe like with Russian, I was like, I was gonna say. yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. It was my lockdown language. Okay. Yeah. That's how I, that's And then how you're I... like, I'm free. <laughs> Dai Jin, Chinese. I know, I know. <laughs> I bought a guitar. Now I can play. I can play a pop song now. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Combine interests and language learning is a beautiful thing. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, there's a. It has enough culturally to make it really sticky for me and really interesting. Mm. It has something maybe that it adds to my identity, but I certainly don't. Not in the same way. Not in mm. the same way. I'm not like a file or something i'm glad you've you've brought that up actually because i think it's interesting when you because i think you probably would learn in welsh around the same time i kind of discovered that guarani existed so ah. we both were learning these languages in like very similar, small languages similar but different situations mm. and i definitely felt that that like i'm learning this because i'm super interested in this place and learning languages that live alongside Spanish and you know I had all of these reasons and going there etc but then like you do feel this um kind of thought of are people thinking I'm only learning this language to look different to be like you know the Guarani person like mm -hmm. you would be the Welsh person like yeah. did that ever cross your mind as well maybe but I know it's not. You know it's not true. And yeah, well, I know and, and it's also, not true. I mean, to be honest, if I'm cool because I'm learning Welsh, I'll take it. <laughs> That's fine. That's, I, I mean, as as this conversation might show, I've, I've got very little to go with. So I'll take it. But, you know, there's a sort of, if an implication, it's like a choice, like almost like a business choice. Yeah. Like stand out in the polyglot world. Yeah. That is obviously ludicrous. Why would I sacrifice I know, right? so much of my life to something like that? So much time and effort and energy. But also, like, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me in the same way because it's mm -hmm. like eight years still here, still doing my thing. Mm. Right. I know the the long no, I don't didn't know the long game of it at the time, but it's just I remember you at the time were grappling also with the kind of is there an ethical concern? Because for for me that doesn't that doesn't it's come in with Welsh like yeah. it's, it is a repressed um, language that has really suffered and has had a lot mm. of discrimination. But grand scheme of things, rich country, white people, right? And mm. for you, it wasn't like that. So I remember you were sort of thinking about that at the time. Yeah, it was it was an interesting language for so many reasons. Yeah, for for that for everything we've just discussed for resources and how that completely differed um yeah it really what? changed my perspective and and like you say welsh then changed gave you that opportunity to learn more about 
English and the English so much. and and kind of gave you this viewpoint mm -hmm. learning Guarani gave me this other viewpoint of all language learning in general as well for all these different reasons and I think that that's such a that's the thing that I'm most kind of grateful for well not mm -hmm. actually no it's not the thing but it's like a thing that I'm really grateful for from that experience yeah um but what okay we've talked about Welsh oh, do you want yeah, a RuPaul so. quote for this I've got a RuPaul. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were also gonna put in RuPaul and Sean Paul RuPaul Sean Paul <laughs> any, <laughs> All balls? The balls. any balls I'm here <laughs> um the RuPaul this is this is like a drag race episode where we had um someone teaming up like a white queen with a black queen this is in America and it was sort of and the white person was like I like we're doing this American this black American show and I feel a bit self-conscious because what if people mm. say I'm doing I'm, I'm parodying or something and what RuPaul said I thought was really good which was if it comes from a place of love if it, and that's how I feel about Welsh Guarani, right? If it, if you're doing it out of love, then people can say people let people talk. People can shit talk all they want. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Ultimately, you're still here, and you're doing it for the for the right reasons. And you're here. And and if you in, your, in yourself know that, then I mean, if somebody really wants to be like Kirsten Cable is learning Welsh only to seem cool, like yeah. that is an amazing use of your time, really. <laughs> I don't that is that is baffling to me that would be amazing so it didn't occur to me in the same way mm, mm, yeah would be funny though <laughs> <laughs> which language does no one else speak let's learn that one yeah. just stand out yeah like okay so so because cool, some it's... people have said to me I'm, I got yeah. interest I'm learning Welsh because you talked about it oh that's cool yeah that's really yeah, cool that's really fun isn't it yeah I I and I mean like I, I said to you before we started recording like my dissertation was about Guarani and social mm. media but like I see a lot more than I did when I started of the language I'm not saying that's because of me at all yeah. but I think it's like when you buy a green car and then you see that green car mm. everywhere you know I think there's a sense of that too of like, like where is algorithm. everyone learning this language yeah right um but yeah okay so anyway Mm -hmm. final question <laughs> I have yeah. no idea how long we've been talking but final question what is next what's is it the, is it a, is it okay and when I say that I don't mean what's your next language because that's not necessarily oh, thank god that's not you know that's not necessarily the mark of a successful language learner like no. you know quantity versus quality whatever we can talk about that all day another mm -hmm. episode but like what's next is it that you are fully content with where you're at and Welsh is continuing is it that you want these other languages that you've previously studied is it that there is a new language what do you think comes next or are you fully open to what happens so um I know okay from a really practical point of view yeah. I know that my online Welsh course it's going to continue next year and I can book in now. So I'm just yeah. going to book in. So I'm probably just going to sl slide skedaddle on into continuing to do the same, but like at ever higher levels. Yeah. Um, my Welsh level, according to what the book says on it, is is B2 now. Yeah. Um, and I would really love to be more comfortable in Welsh and to speak more, um, become com more comfortable reading in the context of me also being super lazy with it, lazy but you know like if if I don't want to do it I can't get myself to yeah. do it anyway yeah. so um I do my homework late but it doesn't matter like the, one of the beauties of being in the group class is it makes me much more aware that I'm not the only one yeah you know? and yeah I, I don't have to be the best <laughs> but I'm not the worst because I don't think there is even the worst mm -hmm. um at, at such a like high level so it's really enjoyable um they talk so it's a local class but online delivered online so they, they talk so much about like what's going on in the Ronda so I'm like cool don't know what's going on in the Ronda I'm going to a festival in Cardiff like a Welsh music festival this summer um the Ace Stethford the Welsh National Festival is next year in the Ronda like where my Welsh class is so I'm totally going it's also the closest part to England or like one of the closest parts to England so <laughs> excited about that it's I don't see 
Welsh as something that's going to not be in my life in the yeah. in the near future at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even though I don't live there and all that stuff, but that's just I'm, I don't even question about that. Um, and then uh, in English, like I said, I just live here. I'm fully yeah. settled. I don't think about it in that way anymore. But I do still. I think there is still a part of me that kind of aims for ha- making sure I have to like idyllic postcard moments, almost. And just every now and then, I have to just like, ha, huh, I live in England and I get to do this. Like it's it's cool. You still kind of get that. It's it's a it's total privilege to have lived you know to live here out of choice. Yeah. Um. It's, it's not necessarily the world's easiest country to live in at the moment, but maybe none of them are um but you know even the fact that I know that and that that's like this is my life like I know much more about English politics British politics than Mm. German politics um is really cool I have I bought a book in French the other day just a sort of gardening book I'm not actively learning French but I do still engage with it all the time um but I don't really think about that in the sense of oh I must you know, if I tell people I'm, I speak French, I need to, to like, show my level. It's <laughs> Internally, I've worked very hard for this. Yeah, I'm not gonna. That's not dropping. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And then if anything else comes, it'll come. I I can't imagine it would be a long term thing without something else giving way. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. I think like there is like you just said about with French. You know, the minute that you say you do anything on the internet, there's almost, especially I think with languages, there's almost this pressure of like, but how do I prove that people yeah. will be waiting what, for what the you to show for yourself? The, the the YouTube video of you know polyglot speaks seventeen languages. Like, mm. nah, <laughs> I'm good. It's just like I want to, like I said, it's more French didn't come as easy to me as English. Mm. Um, but which doesn't mean it's a harder language. It just means mm. I didn't quite enjoy it as much. For you, that's exactly... For me, for yeah. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wasn't as into it, right? I'm not as into the whole baguette. Fi- and it's probably because I come from really near the so French border. So geographically close, yeah. I wanted someone exotic like yeah. Sheffield. <laughs> Preston, woohoo. Um, it's ridiculous in hindsight, but that was really what, to me, was... It's exotic. not. It makes It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I've, I've also worked really hard in French and, mm. and taken the exams and I'm, I have the capacity and I feel like it would be, for me, just personally, again, I'm not to, not to say everybody can let their languages do whatever they want. I know my French skill is good enough that I can pick it up and, and activate it fairly quickly. Mm. Um, and I do want to do that at least once or twice a year, hundred mm. percent. And it's mm. just, uh, I just feel like it was too much work. I don't want to let it all go rusty. That's fair. I can, I can relate to that. I've got my, um, uh, I've got a French and an Italian one on the go at the minute that are like one of, one of them is called improve your French, teach yourself, improve your French is a very old book. And then another is enjoy. It's another teach yourself, enjoy Italian or like oh. just whatever I spot you know, in, in a, especially an Oxfam bookshop in the language section, they're the best ones. Um, if I think, oh, it's for, you know, Portuguese or Italian yeah. or something that I've done, but it's been a while and it's that bit more advanced or something, I always pick them up and yeah. just very casually, you know, with no deadline, with no pressure kind of. It, you've worked hard, right? Book. It's good to keep it. Yeah. Active. You, you, you want to, you want to have them. Whereas there's something like, like Bulgarian, you know, I was a decent conversational level in Bulgarian after six weeks. And I yeah. think the quicker you learn, the quicker you lose. I if you... would strongly subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I did really well in six weeks. I went to Bulgaria, had, mm-hmm. had a time being able to speak and, and get around and whatnot. But then when I came back, I, maybe it was, I can't remember what it was, maybe Guarani. I was doing something else. I had to, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. Yeah. And um and so I kind of have lost that one a lot yeah. quicker. And there's no, there's, I think, well, it was only six weeks. So there's less of a pull to maintain what was, yeah. what was once there, you know? I think, I think maintain, I have a weird relationship with like the word maintain because it just yeah. implies that like you, your level must be 
it it just sounds like work i don't know like to me it just sounds like <laughs> if it sounds like work essentially I'm, i will do it i have, I have work <laughs> ethic but it'll it, it won't be as good it won't be as mm. good you know um so yeah I, i've got i've got this i've got the italian one of the italian tutor books and oh, it's sat yeah. on my shelf for years and i'm always like yeah. i loved italian when i did it i love the yeah. sound of italian i really want to get back to italian yeah. but it's always the one that like on balance i'm like yeah but like welsh is the non-negotiable yeah. french is the one that kind of comes in when like my welsh class is going to break up for summer and in the summer then i do a bit of french yeah and then there's just no space because then i've done enough language for me mm. i don't want to do 12 a day it's just not who i am mm. um and i'm off and i'm just going to do something else mm. you know and i don't like uh audio courses it's just not really my thing you know i've talked about this i think this week last week in an email People are I always really... like Pimsler on a walk and I'm, I, I just I just I don't wish. enjoy it I really really I know. wish it's I did so it would be so great but I need something extra like and yeah I, yeah. I shared this in an email uh, sort of week before we're saying this of like mm -hmm. ways that you can make them something more you know if you want it to work you know yeah if you it want to work, further. right? But if you feel, do you want it to feel like work or not? Exactly. It, both is legit, but do you want it yeah. to feel like work or not? Is a really good question, I think, in yeah. your own language learning. Yeah. And if you think why is Kirsten good, exceptionally good at English, it's because it didn't. I don't know. I wanted it to work. Like it's not work. like I didn't work, but yeah. I like, really wanted to. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted yeah. to be really good, and I strongly, deeply, it's like one of my core beliefs as a person. If you really, really want to do something, there's a way. Mm. There, there's some kind of a way yeah this yeah. bizarre optimism thing I think that's good optimism yeah yeah <laughs> I think it's also a really good point to end on if you want to do something there's a way there's a way there's yeah. a way definitely it's not no work but there is a way oh thank you so much it's been so good to talk to you about this because yeah. i think we've you know we've had these i was on a podcast with Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know like i said about the phone box we've had these little snippets where it's come up and and but i i've never really heard no, you talk fully i didn't realize that there is a full story i have a podcast yeah. episode do you want me to link you to i have one Please episode yeah, yeah, yeah where i talked about like it, and the conclusion i come to is always like it's kind of is this good advice for another learner? Like, just be obsessed with it? Don't yeah. know, but you you can't control. You can't control yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, it you comes, can't... just don't close yourself, I guess. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Be open to it all. It. Brilliant. And so people watching or listening, where can they find out more about you? Uh, that is fluentlanguage.co.uk. Uh, I've got like a webinar -y thing if you want to watch me talk slightly more systematically that is fluent language at credit uk slash secret brilliant <laughs> secret secret excellent excellent well That's thank you so URL, much isn't it? i like it <laughs> thank you so much i will link to those in the show notes as well yeah. and yeah i'm sure i'll speak to you very very soon <laughs> you will you will <laughs> <laughs> okay. bye thank bye. you thanks for having me Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you.